Hello all, uh, welcome to my channel. My name is Srikant Macharaju. I'm an architect at Microsoft, uh, an author and a research student at LGMU. In this video, we will learn how to use Raise RLib on Azure Machine Learning to train agents using custom gym environments. The agent of this session is to walk you through uh, different reinforcement learning methods, uh, Q learning and deep Q learning fundamentals and problems associ associated with it. Uh, how deep uh, distributed deep RL architectures like Apex solve the problems associated with single machine training. And how do you create an environment for conducting such experiments uh, using distributed deep RL on Azure ML using Ray? Uh, finally, uh, I'll give you a code walkthrough of a complete uh, environment and an experiment created using distributed RL uh, on Azure ML using uh, custom gym environments. I would like to begin with a few fundamentals for people who are new to RL. RL is a branch of ML which deals with uh, learning problems where agents try to learn a complex environment uh, by acting on the environment. The agent performs actions which cause change of state of the environment. As a result, the environment emits few properties like next state and the reward. Now these two properties represent the net impact of the action taken by the agent which later becomes a knowledge base for the agent's learning. The agent's goal here is to try and maximize the cumulative discount to reward. Now you may compare this uh, with a, uh, this to a kid trying to learn uh, to ride a bicycle. Uh, in the beginning, kid makes few attempts and fails, but in the each attempt, the kid learns something. For example, uh, the actions that are leading to uh, balance a life cycle, uh, balance a cycle. Now, eventually, the kid learns to ride and, e and, and reach a destination in smaller number of steps, right? So, um, RL is very similar to uh, the, the way kid tries to learn a bicycle. Now, the, the RL is different from uh, traditional supervised learning because the, a the data is not available or neither it's labeled. Neither it is unsupervised because we, we define the reward function which helps the agent to reach its goal. Hence, RL is neither completely supervised, unsupervised, or even semi-supervised. Now, depending on the environment and the availability of the transition uh, probability distribution, which is the probability of state transitions given a uh, particular action, RL is broadly divided into model-based and model-free uh, learning methods. For example, imagine there's a grid uh, walk problem as shown here, which has these state transition probabilities for all the states and uh, actions given. Now, the agent can be trained by using dynamic programming based algorithms like value iteration or policy iteration to reach uh, the final goal in fewer number of steps. But uh, real world problems are uh, not so simple. Now, calculating the probability of a state transition is almost impossible. For example, let's take a probability of moving uh, you moving left when you steer the wheel of your car uh, to the left. It's completely unpredictable. Now, so most of the real world problems can be solved only using model free methods. Uh, in a model free method, there is no actual model of the environment, but the agent is trying to infer by gathering the experience trajectories. Now, depending on the function the agent is trying to learn, uh, the, uh, uh, the model free learning uh, methods are broadly divided into value based, policy based or advantage functions. Now, a wide, a wide variety of algorithms and methods have been uh, proposed under each of these categories. Uh, if you are interested in learning each of these methods, I recommend the below book, uh, which is Reinforcement Learning uh, and Introduction. Uh, now, our focus for this video is, is going to be only to understand Q-learning, so let's go ahead. Q-learning belongs to temporal difference class of methods. The temporal difference uh, methods um, try to predict the future value of a reward over a set of states. Now let's understand about Q learning uh, using an example. Uh, imagine you're trying to solve a maze problem. Now to reach the goal in fewer number of steps, Q learning proposes to create a Q table uh, in which each uh, um, uh, the row represents the number of states, different states uh, uh, the agent can be in. And the columns represent the number of uh, uh, actions that the uh, that the agent can take. The cell represents the future Q value of the action taken in that particular state. Now, once the once you have the values in the table uh, completely filled in and they converge and reach the optimal state, now you have a model which can be used to identify the best action to take in a given state, which is nothing but the maximum value in that row. So, for example, if I'm in state one. Uh, once this Q table is filled, I would take an action where the Q value is highest. 
Now, this method is called the Q learning and the value uh, again it in the cell uh, it represents the Q value. Now the question however is how is the Q value computed? The Q values are computed after every step using the temporal difference method. Now the table is initially bootstrapped with random values and each cell uh, in the state is visited at least once. Now every time it is visited, the value is updated using a learning rate multiplied by the TD error. A TD error is temporal difference error is, uh, is the difference between the estimated value and the current value. Uh, for Q learning, the estimated value is nothing but the max Q value from the next state. So here the the uh, uh, here alpha represents the learning rate to what uh, to the uh, to what extent the new learning overrides the existing learning, and gamma represents the discount factor, which is nothing but the importance given to the future rewards. Now the entire exercise of taking actions and updating Q value is done using uh, using uh, until the agent reaches a terminal state, uh, like a goal or a pitfall. Now each of such sequence is called an episode and after running many such episodes, the values converge. Uh, though though Q learning is an excellent approach for the RL, uh, it suffers from two main challenges. The first being that if, if there is a huge negative reward close to an optimal path, the Q learning uh, will trigger the reward during the training process, which, uh, which we, you might want to avoid for certain environments. Now the second problem is that when a state space is huge, it's very difficult and almost impossible to navigate all the states. Uh, hence, we cannot get a right estimate of the Q value for every cell. Now there are other approaches like SARSA, uh, double DQN to um, solve the first problem. Uh, the focus of this video again is to solve the second problem, which is the state space problem. So let's proceed further. Deep Q learning helps in solving the state space problem. So in DQL, we introduce a neural network, also called as a, um, uh, also called DQN, which stands for Deep Q network. The network learns the Q function by sampling experiences from the memory buffer. So in DQL setup, the agent interacts with the environment and gathers experiences that is the new state and the rewards. These experience trajectory, uh, trajectories are then stored in a memory buffer a learner model samples from the memory and trains a neural network to predict the future q values for any given state so in other words the model finds the model the learner model finds the best combination of weights and biases to predict a target q value given any state the target q values for the network are also drawn from existing experiences using the q learning equation now comparing this with the traditional neural network where the targets are fixed, uh, the, where the target values are fixed, the key difference in uh, DQL is that the target value changes for every time step. So here the target for the neural network is to learn to predict a Q value given a state and then we take the action with maximum Q value for that state. However, again, DQL also suffers with uh, with few problems. One of them being is that it's extremely, extremely slow when the uh, state and action space is high dimensional. Uh, let's understand how this problem can be solved using distributed deep RL. Distributed deep RL solves the problem of slow learning by uh, allowing the agents to learn in parallel. Now in a distributed deep RL setup, uh, fundamentally actors or otherwise called agents act on the environment in parallel. And they share the experience trajectories with a uh, with uh, with using a common memory buffer, which are then sampled by the learner model or models to learn the value function or policy function. Now, besides the algorithm, the uh, the platform which provides the distributed compute, memory, and messaging pla uh, messaging platforms is exploited for optimizing the learning process. Now, depending on the nature of the uh, actors versus uh, the distribution of actors versus learners or agent to environment ratio, the memory design, several uh, methods have been proposed in literature. Uh, some of them, for example, are Gorilla, Impala, Apex, C Daryl. Now, some of uh, a detailed explanation of few of these architectures is available in my uh, in my uh, article, and the link uh, will be made available in the description of this video. Now, in this video, we will learn one of those such architecture and, and also implement one of the such, uh, such architectures, uh, which is uh, Apex. 
Now, Apex uh, is an approach to deep RL where actors uh, are can be scaled to gather more experiences. These experiences are shared with a common replay buffer, which is which acts as a memory uh, as as the state store for all the experiences. And a single learner learns from the shared experiences using prioritized sampling techniques. Apex uses a deep Q network model for learning the value function. Hence, uh, it is chosen for comparing the performance with a single machine DQN. The algorithm actually adapts from how computation of gradients is made parallel in a distributed deep learning setup. And uh, the same approach is applied to our data generation. Now, as a result of this architecture, the actors can be scaled to a greater number of workers. The data generated is way higher and varied compared to simple D, uh, DQN setup because each actor uses a distinct exploration strategy. In a traditional setup, the experiences are sampled uniformly uh, from the memory buffer. But due to sparse nature of uh, the rewards, the learning is not effective at times. Now, Apex adapts from important sampling, often used in distributed Im important sampling for uh, deep neural networks. Now, now, using important sampling, each experience that is shared by the actor into the replay buffer is given a priority by the uh, using the temp temporal difference error. Now, the temporal difference error is, like I explained earlier, is nothing but the difference between the current estimate of Q value and the predicted value plus the reward. In addition to this, all the old experiences are periodically evicted from the replay buffer. So, the, so net net, imp, the important sampling technique adapted by uh, Apex improves the data efficiency and leads to faster convergence compared to a uniform sampling in a simple DQN setup. In a nutshell, the Apex uses the distributed actor models, which acts on their own copy of the environment and share the experience to a common replay buffer. And a single learner mo uh, learner model samples experiences and updates the priorities. The actor networks are periodically updated with the latest network parameters. For training a deep a uh, distributed deep RL agent, we need to choose a platform for conducting our experiments. Now, Azure ML provides unified workspace that contains all the required tools for conducting ML training experiments and uh, deployment. Reinforcement learning experiments can also be conducted using Azure ML. They can be done in two ways. An interactive mode helps running uh, a deep RL experiment using a single machine for dev test and a job mode uh, helps conduct uh, long running uh, um, experiments using a cluster of uh, machines. The cluster management uh, things like scaling, patching, uh, memory and network configuration is automate automatically taken care by Azure ML. Hence, it's a, it makes a perfect platform for conducting our experiments. Now, Azure ML also automatically composes Docker images for actors and learners, uh, which makes it easy to distribute the uh, agents to any other platform. Apart from the infrastructure, we also need a framework for distributing the learning job to actors, constructing and configuring a replay buffer, etc. Uh, so, Race RLlib makes this job easy by providing an easy to use function. RLlib is part of Ray's array and is an open source library which supports production grade, highly distributed RL workloads. Uh, RLlib implements around 27 distributed RL algorithms, one among them being Apex. It supports uh, various types of RL environments and including which includes uh, gym environments. So you may configure uh, the RLlib using a cluster of uh, virtual machines in AKS, or, uh, AKS cluster as well. Uh, however, uh, Rayon uh, AML make Rayon AML makes it easy to convert a, an AML cluster into a Ray cluster. So Ray, Ray on AML uh, integrates well with an existing uh, Azure ML libraries, which makes it easy to quickly get onboarded to AML and run experiments. Uh, however, if you need greater control on the Ray cluster, uh, you, you can still configure uh, Ray on a KH cluster or a cluster of virtual machines, as I mentioned earlier.
let us see how uh, you you can run uh, distributed deep RL experiments on Azure ML using custom gym environments and uh, raise RLib. The now the link to the code artifacts uh, is present in the description if you would like to run uh, try it on your own. So let us understand how uh, distributed deep RL helps us solve the state space problem. We are going to learn it using a sample problem. The problem is related to Contoso Caps, a fictitious cap company. Contoso Caps uh, uh, is a cap company which offers services in five states. And Contoso wants to increase the profits by enabling its drivers to log more trip hours. Now it wants to enable them by uh, building RL agents which help the driver pick the right rides. The goal of the agent is to maximize the rewards, uh, which is a factor of uh, the trip hours, uh, cost per hour, and uh, uh, revenue per hour. Now, the first step in building an RL agent is to create an environment which mimics the actual environment. So, here the Contoso Caps VO represents our environment. We are subclassing it from Jim's environment to uh, so so that we this this becomes a custom uh, gym environment and we can use this in the uh, the distributed RL experiments. Some of the key properties of this uh, environment are uh, defined here. Uh, M is uh, M represents the number of uh, cities the the uh, cap company operates in. T represents the number of hours that the cap company operates per day and D represents the number of days per week the cap company operates. C represents the uh, the uh, rev the cost per uh, hour of the uh, trip uh, that is to the company. R represents the uh, revenue that the company gets uh, from a one hour of uh, travel. So uh, first the first important method that I want to introduce is is the init which is the constructor. So in the constructor, we initialize the action space, um, which is a list of 25 uh, actions that can be taken on this environment. Uh, the 25 actions is required uh, is actually a result of the um, uh, five cities, which is five into five makes 25 actions. Though it represents, though it includes the actions which are not actually in, in reality valid, that is the same source and destination. Uh, we're still going ahead with this um, just because it's a simple example. It's, it's a sample. And um, so if an agent and we want the agent to learn not to pick such actions where the source and destination is same. So in case it, if the agent picks such actions, it will um, it will be penalized. So the agent uh, in future in, in reality uh, tries to avoid such actions. Uh, the uh, action space values actually contains the uh, tuples of the source and destination action space is just a list of indexes of the 25 actions. Uh, the reason because is because, uh, is because since we are using the same class in, the, uh, in, in distributed deep RL uh, or, or the Ray setup, uh, the Ray doesn't support uh, uh, tuple action spaces at the moment uh, since we had to go with this custom arrangement. The observation space represents the uh, current st the state of an agent the state of an agent is the at, at any given point of time is defined using three uh, properties which is uh, uh, which is defined using this tuple now the first uh, uh, property represents the these these uh, city the agent is in the second property represents the hour of the day and the third property represents the day of the week so this at any given point of time uh, tells us with which state the you uh, the uh, agent is in so we initialize it to the uh, to the default state and the time matrix is another important uh, property so for a for a given source and destination the number of hours it takes to travel from the source to destination is created using this random uh, matrix so in essence the agent is trying to learn this matrix to maximize its rewards an episode is of uh, episode length is important to identify if the episode is completed. So if the driver has already completed uh, the maximum hours that he can drive uh, in a month, then the episode is said uh, is uh, is uh, said to be completed. Now, from a training perspective, we, we uh, consider uh, the train the uh, the total reward that is accumulated per an episode. So it's very important to understand that we are not we are not concerned about the reward for every action that is taken by the agent where we are concerned about the total accumulated reward per episode <coughs> 
the step function is another important function step function is responsible for applying the action chosen by the agent agent on the environment so depending on the action that is taken by the environment uh, by the uh, agent it will uh, either um, uh, not take any action in which case it gets penalty or it accepts to write and when it accepts to write uh, to to accept the write uh, it, it, there are two conditions whether the uh, the driver is in the same uh, state um, same same city uh, where the, uh, the from uh, where, uh, same city as the source of the request or if the driver is in a different city in which case uh, the driver has to travel to the source city and then travel to the destination city so I might be using agent and driver um, uh, in, in interchangeably but uh, it's all the same so agent represents uh, the what we're trying to do here is build an agent which is helping the driver so the one and agent and driver are both the same so uh, so finally uh, in, in, in all of these cases we have to compute a reward so we compute the number of hours that has been uh, been uh, logged by the uh, driver due to uh, uh, as a result of accepting the request or denying the request and um, using the revenue and the cost uh, functions we uh, uh, come up with a reward so the reward the next state uh, that the agent moves to uh, as a result of taking that action and whether the episode is completed or not are sent back um, by this particular function uh, along with that you can send some um, additional metadata in this case we are sending the number of trip hours so reset is a function uh, <coughs> uh, which uh, uh, resets the environment to the default state uh, render is actually used in uh, is, is is it can also be used to render the ui um, if it's graphically intensive environment like ping pong you can actually render the whole environment uh, during the training process but in our case we are going to use it seed uh, sets a random seed uh, for environment so in distributed environment when multiple environment classes are created each environment is going to get a different seed it is very important to create the discreteness uh, in in the case of parallel training so that's all so this is the environment class which we are going to use uh, next we are going to see uh, uh, how we are going to use this class to build a simple dqn agent so this is a, this is our simple dqn agent uh, i'm going to introduce a few of the important methods uh, so in it so uh, the in, in init method is uh, is very simple we are going to just initialize the agent with uh, uh, some of the key properties like the discount factor which is part of the queue function that we have seen the epsilon uh, is for the uh, applying the e greedy policy uh, the state encoder vector is important to understand how did we arrive at number 36 so the uh, number of city the cities these um, uh, the age uh, the cap company operates in and the number of hours and number of days is com com uh, is encoded uh, so it comes to 36 so what we're going to feed to the network is actually of size 36 so this is the network which is of uh, we have two uh, layers uh, uh, and we're going to use a, a relu function activation function and the output is of the action size which is 25 um, and uh, this an action function is uh, another very important function that is uh, that defines what is the action the agent is going to take uh, it takes the action based on epsilon greedy approach uh, so according to the epsilon greedy approach uh, if a random number is less than an epsilon value an epsilon value is initialized uh, when the agent is created so I'll, I'll talk about uh, what is the initial value we're going with now with how the value reduces so if uh, if the random value is less less than the epsilon we take a random action from the ex uh, and this becomes the exploration strategy so in, in the beginning the agent uh, takes very random actions if the random value is uh, greater than the epsilon then we ask the uh, network to give us the best action that we can take for that particular state uh, as you can see the state is encoded first to from the tuple to a uh, vector of size 36 and then we are feeding it to the network uh, whatever value we receive uh, we're going to take the maximum of the q value uh, and um, the take the particular action so here uh, what happens what is the epsilon and what uh, how is the value decreasing right so initially an epsilon value of one uh, decreases to uh, a value of you know very uh, low value so this graph explains what happens during the training so in the initial episodes uh, the epsilon epsilon value is high so there are chances that 
um, uh, that the agent explores a lot and as the value becomes smaller and smaller uh, the exploration decreases and exploitation increases so for every episode uh, we uh, update the epsilon value using this particular equation and this is defined by epsilon dk and the epsilon minimum and maximum methods that are uh, defined in that particular class so this is the memory buffer uh, we were just adding it to the memory buffer and train model is another important method so train model is used to train the uh, neural network model that is being used in the uh, uh, predict function here so uh, for a particular batch size uh, of 64 let's say uh, we're going to take uh, uh, we're going to train uh, the model so the model training uh, is uh, if you understand from our equation we're trying to predict the future q values for any given state right so how do we do it uh, so we sample the uh, uh, we sample the uh, uh, experiences from the memory buffer and we create a we create a target we predict the target for those particular uh, states let's take uh, so for for 64 uh, samples we take the uh, initial state and we predict the uh, we get the ta target q values and for each of those states we, we have the corresponding next states right so the next states are taken and and the corresponding q values are also calculated <coughs> now uh, so the net network is is uh, the input to the network is the initial state but the target is actually updated using the q value which is computed using this function so the q value becomes the uh, the reward that we have uh, acquired from the uh, sample uh, if the episode is completed if not the reward is uh, the new q value is equal to the reward plus the discount factor into the uh, a, multiplied by the maximum q value from the next state so this is same as the equation the uh, q uh, the temporal difference uh, equation that we have seen in the slides now this q value uh, the computed q value becomes the target for the network to learn and we run it for one epoch and we collect the history so this is <coughs> the train this is very important method this is the train uh, model uh, this is where the training actual training happens uh, for a single simple dqn now let's see how the training starts and progresses so we <coughs> we start with uh, 1000 we run it for 1000 episodes the epsilon dk is uh, initialized here the learning rate is uh, 0.001 epsilon minimum is 0.001 this is the minimum value uh, least possible value the epsilon can get to the back size is 64 and the a threshold is 10 uh, threshold is basically used to uh, log uh, the records uh, i'm going to uh, some of these properties are actually epsilon maximum uh, uh, the uh, discount factor and all are uh, actually set to default in the init method itself so this is uh, if you want to change the discount factor or change the uh, dk or uh, anything you can also change from here now initial an agent is created like i said we're going to run for uh, thousand episodes uh, now for each episode uh, the agent takes an action uh, gets an action so here you could get a random action or a predicted action and from that action um, we are going to apply the action on the environment and whatever next state rewarded and uh, the if the episode is completed is, is collected in the step and added to the memory buffer so every time step uh, you can actually train but here what we're doing is we are only training for every uh, 10 steps uh, so that we're not regularly training uh, the uh, model it's not necessary as such you train for every time step and um, the next state uh, and the next state becomes the current state so that way the training progresses uh, and uh, we accum we uh, accumulate the reward and uh, if the so this this and this this is called a time step and the time step com continues until the environment has reached the terminal state which is the done state if the uh, agent has driven all the uh, trip hours uh, that uh, the maximum trip hours for that episode the episode is set as to, set to be completed so this runs for 1000 episodes and finally uh, we'll now see what is the total accumulated reward uh, and for and another thing to remember is that for every episode we are updating the epsilon using this particular equation now uh, i've run this for 1000 episodes uh, you can see this that uh, the 1000 episodes and each total reward for every episode is available here and uh, the total time is very important it has taken around 37 minutes to run 1000 episodes and the uh, total reward is between uh, 
2500 to 3000 uh, you can also see this using uh, the reporting uh, tool uh, i have built notebook that i have built here so the rewards are initially low and they reach a maximum of 2000 2500 to 3000 and they uh, dangle between 2500 to 3000 and this is called the convergence so there's there's you can see a flattened curve here uh, between 2500 to 3000 so the, this is the rewards that the agent can get from the environment but again the key, uh, the key thing to remember is that uh, uh, that it has taken uh, 37 minutes to reach the convergence now let's see how uh, we can uh, reduce that duration of 37 minutes by uh, using a cluster and uh, distributed deep parallel uh, and apex so this is the uh, experiment file uh, this is uh, uh, this is where i'm going to use the azure ml cluster to run the experiment uh, so in this uh, uh, file uh, there are uh, a few things which are important uh, first we need a cluster so i've already created a cluster but if you want to do on your own uh, you just have to call this particular uh, invoke this cluster dot uh, py file it creates an aml cluster with uh with zero to uh two nodes uh the uh so we are getting we are initializing an environment which is a cluster environment and uh, the cluster configuration is defined in this yaml file so any third party libraries that you want to get installed like tensorflow or uh, or uh, uh, uh pandas anything so you can you can define in this yaml file and uh, they get installed uh, i'm using a base image uh, this docker base image as since i'm uh, making the environment as docker docker uh, enabling for a docker on this uh, uh, run configuration i'm using this particular docker image uh, for running the experiments so i'm setting the node count to be three so and uh, so no, no there will be three nodes available each of size two core uh, by default and this is my run configuration uh, with this run configuration uh, and uh, uh, this run configuration actually is passed to the script run config this is uh, where this is the aml library which uh, which can which creates an experiment right so along with this configuration i'm also passing a command the command is nothing but the script the script i want to run on the cluster the script name is uh, the actual job which i'm initiating which is the distributed rl job uh, i'll talk about the script in some time uh, the training algorithm here i'm choosing is apex the rl environment uh, which i'm using is a custom environment that i've shown uh, uh, in few minutes back uh, which is the uh, custom contour so caps environment and some configuration which I'm passing to that particular job. So this file is only creating an AML ex Azure ML experiment. It's not creating a uh, um, RL experiment yet. It's not starting the job yet. It's only initiating the experiment, uh, the, the Azure ML experiment. Now, once you run this particular file, it invokes uh, the uh, run tune job ML uh, file, which we are referred in the previous file. So here, uh, there are few more important uh, aspects. So uh, we, the, when this function is invoked, we get the instance of Ray. So since we have included uh, installed Ray on that cluster already, so we get the instance of the Ray uh, uh, using these two line, uh, lines of code. And uh, if the if we are in the head of head node of the Ray cluster, we are going to initiate the training and it takes care of configuring the workers as well so in the if it's if you're in the head node uh, we're going to pass the arguments that are passed uh, from the previous class we'll take the default configuration of uh, apex so this is again coming from the uh, rl lib library the default configuration for apex we override some of the parameters uh, that is the class for in this case we are using we're not using a, a out of the box gym environment in this case we're using a custom gym environment so we are going to pass the class name here uh, the log level and callbacks callbacks i'm using only to report certain important properties back to the azure ml job dashboard okay uh, so uh, i'm going to merge these two dictionaries the two dictionaries are the default configuration that uh, array provides and i'm going to uh, merge over uh, the dictionary that i have prepared with certain overrides so finally this configuration is what we pass to the job so in uh, so i'm going to use tune.run which is a recommended method to run uh, rl jobs so uh, tune.run takes uh, these uh, three arguments 
uh, and four arguments but three yeah, are i'm going to talk about each one of those the uh, run or uh, experiment is actually the algorithm that i want to run and configuration contains the environment that i want to run and different other uh, parameters stop uh, is actually the number of iterations that i wanted to run for here i'm running the uh, running it for uh, three iterations you can see this value coming from uh, the experiment class right so the number of iterations is three and uh, i'm storing the logs in the log folder so uh, that is it so when you run the experiment uh, file it run, invokes the uh, it, it it sets up the cluster with three nodes and uh, in, and initiates the job uh, on the head node which takes care of spinning off the number of workers uh, so now we are going to see uh, the result of running such a job so now i'm going to uh, create a distributed rl experiment on uh, azure ml so i i'm invoking the um, the run experiment class from here so it will create an experiment and immediately uh, complete the um, command here so i'll show you the result of that particular uh, experiment so the experiment is created now when you go to the job section you will see that uh, for the uh, for this particular uh, in, uh, uh, the job a new instance of the experiment is created now uh, this is going to take some time this is going to take at least uh, three to four minutes uh, initially it will take uh, around 11 minutes but you don't have to worry about that this is because the uh, since the cluster is uh, created on the fly uh, it will take time to prepare the cluster and the images but uh, if you are reusing the cluster for another experiment the time is around three minutes so the important thing to note is if i just take uh, this particular experiment that uh, you can see that we have uh, reached the same uh, three, 2500 to 3000 uh, uh, reward uh, the convergence is the same but we have run that for around uh, 6000 to 7000 episodes and it only took three minutes so this is very important uh, to understand because in the in using a simple dqn for running 1000 episodes it has taken 37 minutes now by uh, distributing the workload across multiple workers using an apex algorithm uh, we have reduced the training time from 37 minutes to 3 minutes and we are also able to run more episodes uh, within those 3 minutes it's around from the ranges from 1000 to around uh, 6000 episodes and uh, the there's not going to not going to be change in the, uh, the rewards total rewards that you can acquire from the environment but we have reduced the training time now further uh, this is already conducted experiment so i'll just walk you through some of these uh, uh, methods uh, some of these important uh, out, output here so in the result you will find the um, uh, in, in the progress sorry in the progress you will find the uh, number of episodes that are run for iterations are like I said earlier I'm running it for three iterations for each, each iteration there are certain myth, uh, episodes that are run and uh, the number of total time steps and three watts so this file is important to understand what happened in each iteration <clears throat> in the uh, azure ml dot logs if you want to know the details of how many workers were spin off and what uh, each worker returned, you can look at this log right this log tells you the iteration number uh, and uh, the reward that is maximum for that particular episode uh, for the iteration and uh, in this itself you will identify the uh, the workers that are actually spin off each uh, uh, worker gets a unique pid using that pid you can identify how many workers are actually created and um, <coughs> and uh, the final output is also available in each of these experiment states uh, if you are interested in understanding in detail for output from every agent and uh, if you want to further uh, add more custom logs uh, you can do uh, using uh, the R, either ML Azure ML libraries or the Rayleigh libraries it depends on whether you want to project 
uh, use your own custom dashboards to uh, or like a tensorflow dashboard to uh, report the output or if you want to use the uh, dash uh, the metrics uh, that are shown here you can also report it back to the uh, azure ml dashboards so here i've so the callback function that i've used uh, is actually the uh, the outcome of this callback functions is this that i'm able to report the overall outcome of the experiment from here uh, like because some of the custom properties are like episode length, uh, reward max, and reward mean. So that's all I uh, I wanted to talk about. So uh, to summarize, we've understood uh, the importance of uh, using a DQ network in for given an RL uh, problem, and we've uh, also understood what are the problems associated with the uh, using a simple DQ in, in a real time environment. Uh, now further we have uh, so we have taken a custom environment and we've run it for thousand episodes and notice that the rewards converge between 2500 to 3000 but it however takes 35 to 40 minutes uh, to converge now taking the same experiment uh, came the same environment and uh, deploying it on an azure ml uh, cluster using uh, race rlib uh, we have were able to run around 6000 episodes uh, in uh, less than three minutes uh, with uh, 10 workers uh, and the rewards converge again between 2500 to 3000 so in a nutshell uh, since the uh, most of the time that is spent by a uh, agent in an rl environment is to acquire the uh, experience trajectories by scaling it to maximum number of uh, workers uh, improves the time it takes to converge and also the uh, uh, the uh, utilization of the overall cluster can be improved so that's all uh, from uh, this particular session. Uh, thanks for uh, listening uh, again. Uh, uh, have a nice day.